What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're talking all about presets here in DaVinci Resolve. But hey, if you're new here, my name is Jay Yudlovsky and on this channel we talk a lot about DaVinci Resolve, some photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, and even some gear stuff, because everybody loves gear stuff, right? So if you're into any of those, consider subscribing to my channel. So let's jump into the video. Presets are awesome. We can create all kinds of presets here in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm gonna go through and show you how to create probably the ones you're most interested in, but I'm also gonna tell you about a few that you might not have known about here in DaVinci Resolve. So let's jump into Resolve, show you how to create some presets to speed up your workflow. So we're gonna go through each tab here in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm gonna show you different presets that you can create that are gonna help you save time as you're working on your projects. So if you wanna see what presets we're covering and you wanna to jump to a certain type of preset, check the description down below and you can click the link and jump right to that point in the video. Getting started here, we're gonna talk about transitions and how you can create a new transition preset. So if we open up our effects library, and we come down to our video transitions, we wanna maybe take one of these guys and customize it and make it our own. So let's pick, um, I don't know, let's just pick the star here. I'm gonna bring it over, I'm gonna drop it on my sample footage here, zoom in a little bit. Now in order to make changes to my transition, you can just click on it, open your inspector. Before I make any changes, let's just show you what it looks like up here in the viewer. So there's our star transition. And let's say maybe I want to add a border to it and I wanna make that border YouTube red. So, and when I play through it, our border is red and we have a star. And uh, let's just say maybe I want to make it a little bit longer. And yep, that looks pretty good. That's what I wanna go with. So now I wanna save this as a preset. So if I select my transition and right click on it, you can come down to create transition preset. And now you can name it whatever you want. We're gonna call it uh, red star preset. I'm going to click OK. Now, if we come over to our effects library and we scroll down, now there's a user section here and it has our red star preset in it. So let's just say, boom, I delete that. Now, if I come over here and let's say I want to add my red star preset, just grab it, drop it where I want the transition to be. And if we play through it, you'll see it'll be the red bordered star. So that's the first preset, creating a new transition from an existing one, modifying it however you want and saving it as a preset. So the next thing we wanna talk about that's not necessarily a preset, but it's a way to get um, elements from one project to another without having to reload them or copy them between projects. So we wanna talk about power bins and power bins are super helpful. So let's turn off our effects library, turn on our media pool. And if you look down the side here, you should see power bins. If you don't see the power bins, come up to the top to view, scroll down, and you should see power bins right here and make sure that it is checked on. Then you should see your power bins. And what's really cool about power bins is that it allows you to share things from one project to the next. So you don't have to copy them between projects. You can just put them in a power bin and it will automatically be there once you open a new project. You can include things like titles or certain graphics or stills, maybe sound effects or music files or other media that you want to be available for each and every project. So power bins are really good. And if I open mine here in my master, I've got a couple different transitions. I've got an intro outro folder here where I just have an end screen that I typically use and you can dump all kinds of stuff in here and it makes it super helpful. You don't have to copy back and forth between projects and using the power bin as easy as right clicking, say add bin. And then let's say I wanted to put this video clip in, just drag it over to the bin, drop it in, and now that video clip is in the bin and I can use it in any project that I want. So definitely check out the power bins. So now we're gonna go ahead and jump over into the color tab. So let's say I've got a typical uh, color grade that I like to use on all my footage, or maybe there's something that I generally apply first and then make little tweaks from there. Well, you've got a few different ways that you can save a preset of your color grades. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and color grade a clip in the way that you like. So once you've got your color grade all set, you can create a 3D LUT. In order to create the 3D LUT, just come down to your clip, right click, come to generate 3D LUT. You can do either the 33 point or the 65 point. I'm just gonna do the 33 for now. And then it'll pop up a window and give you an option of a place to save it. So I'm gonna throw it on the desktop real quick. We're gonna call this sample LUT. Save, and now if I come over here and open up my LUTs, let's say that I want to be able to see that LUT in this list here. So I'm just gonna right click and say reveal in Finder, so I know where I can put the file. 
and we see right here in LUT, and then we've got my different folders for different kinds of LUTs right in here. So I'm gonna create a new folder in here called user. Now I'm gonna go find the file I just put on my desktop and drop it in this folder. So I'm gonna paste that file in there. I'm gonna come back to DaVinci Resolve. I need to refresh. So if I right click and click refresh, it should add in that folder for me. Yep, there it is, user. And you can see here is the sample LUT that I created. So let's say we wanna try this out. I'm just gonna delete these two nodes here. I'm gonna add a new node and we're gonna drop the LUT on there and it gives us the same look that we had originally with our two nodes. So that's how you can save your color grade as a preset LUT that you can just apply to any one of your clips. So the LUTs are great and it's like a one-stop shop. You drop it on your clip and you're good to go if that's the exact color grade that you want. But let's say that you wanted to keep the node structure intact so you can go through and make adjustments where you may need to. So how do we save a preset that keeps the nodes intact? So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna close my LUTs and I'm gonna actually open up the gallery right here. So what we wanna do is create a still and a still is gonna keep all the information of the nodes as well as the settings for each node intact. And we're gonna be able to apply that to any clip that we want. So let's say I've got my color grade set here. I like this. To save a still, come and right click and say grab still. And what that does is puts a still image over in your stills bin right here. And this still right here has all of the information that we see right here in these nodes. So how do we use this? So let's say I wanna use this still to apply the same color grade to this clip right here, which has no grade to it currently. All you have to do is click on your still and drag it over onto your nodes, drop it, and there are your nodes that we created. The first one remains intact, so if I turn off these two, you'll see there's our main clip. The first node is not affected, and it just added on the other two nodes that we had seen on our previous clip. So now you can go in and make the adjustments on this clip that you may need to. So in some cases, this may be better than a LUT because a LUT is all the settings baked into it, and all you can do is kind of raise and lower the opacity of that LUT, but with this option, you actually can change the settings within each node based on your clip. So you can make whatever adjustments you may need to. So since we have this still created, another really cool feature that was added recently is called Power Grades. And Power Grades is just like the Power Bins back in the Edit tab. So Power Grades will allow you to carry stills from project to project. So why is that good? That's good because let's say we have a color grade that we like and it's got our node structure in it. We save the still and I wanna be able to use that in other projects. Instead of having to come and copy this from one project to another and open and close projects and all that, all you have to do is click on your still and drag it into the power grade. Now, everything in this power grade is gonna be available in all of your projects. So power bins and power grades are awesome because they carry things from one project to the another. It's almost like having a library that goes with you to each project. So power grades are a pretty sweet tool here in the color tab. So now let's head on over to the Fairlight tab. Here we're gonna talk about some audio presets. So we've got a lot of different presets that we can create here in the Fairlight tab, and it makes it super easy when you're working through your project and if you're using the same you know, microphones or maybe there's some of the same settings you consistently use, you can just apply the preset and you're good to go. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. So although I don't have any audio on my tracks currently, it doesn't matter. The idea of how we create a preset here is gonna be the same. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go through your audio channel here, add your effects, your EQ, any of your dynamics, make any changes that you wanna save as the preset. So now I've gone ahead already and added in a bunch of stuff that I wanna save as a preset. I've got a multi-band compressor, a de-esser, um, a dialogue enhancer, I EQ'd my track a little bit, and let's say I've put some dynamics on there, and I wanna save these as a preset. So in order to save audio presets, come up to the Fairlight menu at the top, Click on that, come down to Preset Library. So this window may look a little confusing, but it's not as bad as it looks. So over here we have Filter By, and this is all the different types of presets that you can create. You can create just equalizer presets, just dynamics, just your plugins. You can create a global track preset. You can create a global bus preset or a full console preset that will set everything on the console for you. So the ones that I've used are the equalizer presets as well as the global track presets. And I think EQ is good because I've got a few microphones. So I create an EQ for that mic and then I can just apply the EQ instead of having to reinvent the wheel each time I use the microphone. And I also use global track presets. Generally, I film in the same locations and I use the same settings in the Fairlight tab here 
for each of my recordings. So I have set up a global track preset. But let's say in this case, I just wanna do an equalizer preset. So I'm gonna to come to the equalizer presets here and I wanna create a new one. So you're gonna to wanna to select your audio track that you wanna to use to create your preset. So in my case over here, I have A1. So I'm gonna choose audio one right here and I wanna come down and click save new. So this is gonna create a new equalizer preset based on audio track one. So let's just call this test EQ. I'm gonna say okay. And boom, there's my test EQ. And you would create presets the same way for any of these other presets. So let's say, as an example, I wanna create a global track preset so that I've got everything I've set up here on this channel good to go. I know it works for my Yeti, where I film. So I'm gonna select global track preset, my audio one track, because that's where I made my changes, and I'm gonna click save new. I'm gonna call it test global. Click okay. And now I see my test global preset right here. So like I said, you can go through each one of these and that's how you would save a preset for your audio in that particular category. So now let's say I wanna apply that preset. How do I use it? Let's say I wanna apply my global track preset to audio two. Again, I come up to Fairlight at the top, come down to preset library, and I'm on my global track presets right here. And I wanna apply this test global to track number two. So I would select audio two and just hit apply. And then say change track. And if I come look over here on my track, let's close this window. If I come over here, look on my track, you can see it applied the exact same changes that I made on my audio track one. Everything was changed globally on track two based on that preset. So these are super helpful. I definitely use this all the time on my audio. I get it set up once, create the preset, and I'm good to go. So now let's jump over into the Fusion tab. So you've got different options of how you can create presets here in the Fusion tab. And this is one way to do it. The first thing you'd wanna do is go ahead and go through and create your image or whatever it is you might wanna work on that you wanna create a preset of. So if I come and play through this, you can see it's just kinda of like a cloud looking thing that uh, changes color shape a little bit. So let's say that I wanna save this as a preset so I can use it in another project. In order to save this as a preset, what you wanna do is come and select all the items you wanna save in the preset. Then you wanna right click on one of the nodes and come up to macro and say create macro. And once you pick that, that's gonna bring up the macro editor. So it looks pretty confusing here. There's a lot of stuff going on, but basically what this is, is each one of your nodes from down here in the Fusion tab. And if you open it, it gives you all of the options that you can either say, yes, I wanna be able to edit it later or no, I don't wanna edit it later. So for example, let's say maybe I wanted to be able to change the background color uh, at a later date once I bring this into another project. If I click on background one and scroll down to where I see color, I would just go through and check on the items that I might wanna be able to change later on. Let's say I wanna be able to change the gradient type, um, the color, or any of these other things. You would just check those items and turn them on. If there's nothing that you wanna be able to edit later on, then you can just click close. And then it's gonna pop up a window that says save changes to macro tool. And you would say yes. And it should give you a default path here, uh, DaVinci Resolve Fusion Macros. And uh, let's just call this uh, Fusion Test. And it's gonna save it as a dot setting file. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And now we've got a preset of this saved for us. So let's go ahead and just delete this real quick and see how we can use our preset. So if I wanna use that preset that I just created, we can just come down in here. We can shift space bar, which brings up our uh, selection tool with all of our different things we can add. And I know I called it Fusion Test and it'll pop up right here. We can just click on that, add it in, hook it up to our media out. And if we play through, there we go, there it is. Now, one of the things I did leave available was the color. So I said I wanted to be able to change the color. So let's just try it, I don't know, pick red, click okay. And now we can change that red background. And there's not much else we can edit because we didn't say that we wanted to edit anything else in that macro when we created it. All right, so let's say that I want to add that macro into the effects library over here. And I wanted to create a folder that appeared over here where I could easily place all of my preset stuff that I create here in Fusion. In order to do that, I'm gonna to need to open up my Finder. So once I'm in Finder, I wanna find where the macro was placed, which for me was uh, your computer name, library, application support. 
Black Magic Design, DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, and Macros. And in this folder is where the two macros that I created are stored. So I'm gonna take this Fusion test, I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna come over to Templates. And inside the Templates folder here, you're gonna see a folder called Fusion. So I've dumped in my macro file there, pasted it in. So now that I've restarted DaVinci Resolve, if I've come up to the effects and click on templates, you can see right here is my fusion test and I can just drag it right down into the viewer down here, connect it up and we should be good to go. And you can see there our little uh, animation works just fine. So you can do it either way. You can leave it where the macro puts it in the beginning or you can copy it to that location we showed in uh, Finder there and it'll appear right here in your templates. So now we're gonna jump over into the Deliver tab and create a render preset. So I do have a video all about the Delivery tab here. I'll link to it above. You'll see a card pop up. And um, I'm just gonna show you quickly here how you can create a preset so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel each time you come into the Delivery tab. So again, you can pick any of the presets up here, but let's say I'm gonna create my own. Uh, let's say I wanna do uh, 4K, I got 23.976 gonna go automatic, we'll change this to high. And let's say I've got everything set up. Maybe I have a location where you always store your files. You can select that if you'd like. And if you don't, that's fine. You can leave it blank and fill it in for each project. But once you have all your settings set here where you like them, just come up to these three little dots right here. Then click save as new preset. And you can enter the name here. I'm gonna call it test export. I'm gonna click okay. And now you'll see a new icon pop up here on the left and it's gonna have all of the presets that you've created. So you can see I have one here for a 1080 export, one for exporting a 1080 timeline in 4K, and the new one I just created called test export. So let's say maybe I didn't want this one, I don't need it. I'm gonna come back to my three little dots over here and say delete current preset. Get rid of that because I don't need it, but that's how you would create a preset here in the delivery tab. So those are the basic presets that you might wanna know how to create here in DaVinci Resolve, but there's a few other ones that I think are pretty cool that could also come in very handy. So the first one that I wanna show you is how to create a full project preset, something basically that you would apply before you started working on your project when you created your new project file. So let's say I just created a new project. So if you come to your project settings, I'm gonna open this up. And if I click on the top uh, button here, presets, so what this is, is it allows you to save all of your settings that you set for your project, save it as a preset. So you don't have to go through and create them each time. For example, I can go through my master settings, set up my timeline uh, resolution, my frame rate. You can set your proxy file types, um, how long you want it to cache after waiting. Anything that you see here in this whole uh, menu, you have the option to set and then come back to your presets and you can just save all those settings as a new preset. So you just click save as, name it, I'm gonna call it test preset here, click okay, and boom, it's right there. So when I start a new project, I would come to this window in the project settings, I'd open the presets, click on my preset and just click load. That way I don't have to go through and make all the same changes for each project. And that should help get you going on the right foot. So the next preset that might come in handy is your layout preset, what your window looks like. So if you come up to workspace here, you have the option to change the way things look, move things around, change your UI and make it look however you want. And if you wanna save that as a preset, so you don't have to do that each time you come into Resolve or maybe somebody else works on your machine too and you just want your layout to be there each time you come back to DaVinci Resolve, you can set it up how you want, then come to Layout Presets and save Layout as Preset. Click there, again, name it and then click OK, and it's gonna save your window so it always looks the same. You can apply the preset and see the same window each time you come into DaVinci Resolve. In order to load it up, you would come back to Workspace, down to Layout Presets. So that's helpful maybe if you have more than one person working on your machine. And the last preset I wanna mention here is the User Interface Preset Settings. So if you come up to your DaVinci Resolve at the top left here, come down to Preferences, and make sure you're on the User section here and you can go through and make changes to here and save it as a preset just in case something changes or maybe you got to update or something gets out of whack. So make your changes and then if you come up to the three dots in the corner here, select them and come down to save user preferences as preset. Select that, name it, click okay. And the same way if you want to load it up, you could import preferences as preset. 
And once you save your user preferences here as a preset, you always have the option to load them back up should you need to in the future. There you go, creating presets in DaVinci Resolve. Gonna speed up your workflow. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.